100 days in Terraria's newest difficulty, Master Mode. I haven't done a full playthrough of this game in like two-ish years, so I thought, hey, I'll just start with Master Mode, it'll be super duper easy. But I, I, I was very wrong. What Master Mode does is it takes all the enemies and bosses and makes them significantly harder, but it also rewards you with things like better loot and higher drop chances. In this playthrough, I'll be trying to beat all the main bosses required for progression, along with a few side bosses if I'm feeling for it. I spent a lot of time in this video, so I hope you all enjoy. This is Terraria Master Mode. I started by getting some wood because I knew I was going to need it to traverse caves and craft some early on shit. I knew this shit was going to be difficult because it took me ages to kill a simple slime. As soon as I got enough wood, I went straight to the caves to start mining ores and finding chests to get some early on equipment. I was doing fairly decent in the caves until I got tag teamed by two blue slimes and died. As soon as I got back into the caves, I just died again. When I respawned, it was night, and let me tell you, this was not a fun night. After dying many, many times, I eventually got to building my house so I wouldn't have to deal with this the next night and so I could have a few NPCs move in with me. NPCs are characters that help you in various ways and they all have some sort of unique requirement to spawn. I spent the entirety of day 2 building my house and to be honest, I wasn't that happy with it. Day 3, I started my elevator, which is quite literally a straight hole to hell. I found a glowing mushroom biome on the way there and got some glowing mushrooms which will really help with health potions later on. I died quite a few times doing this and was barely finding any chests, so I decided to explore the surface to see if I could find anything better. I found one of those really big trees that you find outside in the forest, but all it had in it was garbage. But I was very excited to find a desert temple, which had a sandstorm and a bottle in it. I ended up finding a corruption biome, but died as soon as I entered it. I went right back after, but just died again, so I decided to go to the left to see if I could find anything, and I ended up finding a corruption, and there I got my first gun, it was a musket. I was building NPC housing when my first actual challenge came, the goblin army. After a few deaths, I came to the conclusion that I am definitely not ready to take on the goblin army, so I just went down to the cage to continue my elevator, where I finally started to find some gold chests. At some point, a crawdad dropped a yo-yo, so I ended up using that yo-yo combined with some grenades from the demolitionist to defeat the goblin army. Eventually, I made it to hell, where I was on a mission to find potions for boss fights, and the best way I thought of doing that was breaking the vases down in hell, because they contain all sorts of loot. After all of my preparation, I thought it was finally time to take on my first boss, the King Slime. The boss fight was a lot easier than I expected, and I'm very glad that I got the slime mount the first try. I got to work on the Eye of Cthulhu arena to make it a bit easier to kill. In order to fight the Eye of Cthulhu, I needed lenses to make it spawner, so I needed to wait for it to be night to kill the floaty little eyeballs. While I waited for it to be night, I talked to the NPCs, specifically the new furry NPC, because she had a lot of whack merchandise for sale. From her, I ended up getting a cat license, which makes, a, I guess, a cat come to my house through a delivery service? I don't know how it works. I ended up sorting a bunch of stuff to make my chests and my inventory look very nice and neat and very pretty. And overall, I just let myself relax for a little bit, because I've been for, through a very stressful eight days. 
The next morning I spawned the King Slime again just to try making a little extra moolah, and I also tried to use him to kill the painter to get the paintball gun from him, but it obviously didn't work. Afterwards, I finished the Eye of Cthulhu Arena and ended up fighting him, but I, I ended up trying to fucking fall damage. So I tried again the next night and I beat him, which was honestly super duper easy. During the last two days I was fighting the Eye of Cthulhu, I ended up making the Eater of Worlds Arena, which is just a big fucking worm, but I ended up dying to him about midway through. With the resources from the two bosses, I ended up making the Nightmare Pickaxe and got right back to mining my elevator to get some Hellstone, but I ended up running into lava, and the easiest way I found to get through it was to bring water down to the lava, which also gave me Obsidian that's needed to craft the Hellstone bars anyway, so it was a win-win situation. Along the way, I killed Tim and stole his hat, which I thought was really funny. Now, mining Hellstone is tricky because not only does it hurt you when you touch it, but it also releases lava when broken. So I drank an obsidian skin potion to become immune to lava and negate the burning effect for a few minutes. To make the armor set and the tools that I wanted, I needed roughly 70 Hellstone bars, which equates to about 210 Hellstone ore. So I was down there for quite a fucking while. Eventually, I made it back up, and typically you weren't supposed to make all this stuff till before the final boss of pre-hard mode, but I thought this would make things way easier in the long run. On day 12, I fought the Eater of Worlds again, but he despawned due to me leaving the corruption. I at first thought the arena wasn't the problem, so I went down to his realm to try fighting him, but obviously fucking lost. I challenged the big squiggly asshole one more time and ended up beating him early on day 13. I spent the rest of the day in the jungle looking for an anglet of the wind to make some lightning boots, but out of the many chests I searched through, I came up with nothing. I did come across a jungle temple though, and died immediately to one of its traps, but none of this amounted to how crazy day 14 and 15 were about to be. A goblin army showed up out of nowhere which I made swift work of, I ended up buying a mini shark to kill a shit ton of king slimes for some more fucking money. Slime started raining from the sky, which is a pain in the ass to fucking deal with, but on top of that, just to add on to that, a blood moon decided to raise that same fucking night during the slime rant, so I was dealing with slimes and the blood moon, and I was just trying to get to the fucking Skeletron fucking dungeon to fucking make my Skeletron arena. I thought things would maybe ease up on the next day, but no. On day 15, I deal with all the little fuckers from the blood moon, which allowed me to get zero progress done on my fucking arena. Slime was still falling from the fucking sky for whatever reason. Another goblin army. I'm telling you, another fucking goblin army spawned and fucked with me all fucking day. And just to top it all off, just to add the little cherry on the end of the cake, I lost to the Skeltron fight. Because he de-fucking spawned. Okay, let me tell you for a minute how actually stressful that fucking was. It was fucking insane. I was so close to quitting the game multiple times. I was so pissed. But anyways... On day 16, I brought more water into the elevator and ended up finishing it and making a straight hole from the surface to hell. Later that night, I attempted the Skeletron fight again, but ended up getting stuck on his head. I really hated how my house looked, so I spent days 17 through 20 redoing the entire thing, so here's a little montage of that.
For day 21, I actually lost the recording, but all that happened was me miserably failing at the Old One's army. On day 22, I started the Hell Highway, which is simply just a long path all the way across Hell. This is the most important thing for the Wall of Flesh boss fight, I think, because it helps me avoid anything in the way, such as enemies, lava, structures, etc. I also ended up failing the Skeletron fight again because I forgot to set my spawn. I was getting real sick and tired of the Skeletron at this point, so on day 23 I slept through the entire day and went to fight him one last time. The dungeon had been officially unlocked and it took me no time to sort through its drops and crawl down there to uncover its mysteries. I was very unfamiliar with the whole trap system that was put in with the dungeon because last time I did it, the dungeon was, you know, normal, you just walk on through. So I ended up getting tricked quite a few times. I was down there looking for two specific items, a shadow key that opens the shadow chest down in hell, and the bewitching table which will help me with summoning stuff later on. I wanted the hellwing bow out of the shadow chest because the hellwing bow takes normal wooden arrows and turns them into little flying bats that explode upon impact. But after ages of searching I came up with nothing. For days 24 through 28, I worked on the Hell Highway and attempted the Wall of Flesh. To summon the Wall of Flesh, there are these little voodoo demons that carry on little voodoo dolls of the guide, and once the doll has been thrown into lava, the Wall of Flesh spawns. The Wall of Flesh had been defeated and hard mode had officially started. You can tell from the text on the bottom left that things were about to get even more difficult than they already were. I threw his trophy down, slapped his tongue right up against the wall, and got right to sorting through his items. So I forgot to hit record, but what happened on day 30 was I used the hammer I got from the Wall of Flesh fight to break the demon altars in the corruption because once broken the demon altars spawned in three new ores. There are six ores total, but the world randomly chooses three for you. I got Cobalt, Aura Calcum, and Titanium. To continue day 30, I went to get more Aura Calcum ore to make the drill used to mine Titanium, but let me tell you, the caves are no joke anymore. Trying to survive in these caves was an actual fucking hell, but eventually I managed to make the drill and moved on to getting Titanium. Titanium was very scarce, so it took me ages to find it, and these new enemies didn't help in the fucking slightest. But on day 32, I managed to craft titanium armor in order to prepare for my next big challenge. 
I wanted to beat the pirate invasion, for that I was going to need traps, so I found the mechanic down in the dungeon, and bought some tools, and got right to work. The trap system that I've always used consists of a big ass hole on each side of the house combined with dart traps to poison the enemies. I also make a little mole tunnel in the middle right in between the two dart traps, so I can attack the enemies that are stuck inside the hole. After that I went to the ocean to farm for a pirate map to actually spawn the pirate invasion, but never ended up getting one. For days 35 through 40, I hit a roadblock. I didn't know what I should be doing and I was pretty much lost the entire time. I tried to get frost cores to make the frost armor. I tried to get the clockwork assault rifle to see if it was better than my crossbow. I spent a lot of time just killing random enemies. I even attempted the queen slime at one point. The only thing I managed to accomplish throughout all this was getting pixie dust for wings. To make the wings, I also needed souls of flight which you can get from killing wyverns up in the sky. After crafting my first set of wings, I used the souls of light that I had accumulated from killing all the normal enemies in the game to make a key of light. Once that key of light is put into any sort of chest that you have, a mini boss called a mimic spawns. There are a few types of mimics that you can spawn depending on the biome you are currently in, like the hollowed mimic, the corrupt mimic, etc. I wanted to kill the hollowed mimic so I could get this bow called the Daedalus Storm Bow. It took a lot of time and even more souls of light, but eventually I did end up getting the Daedalus Storm Bow. During all my mimic farming, I spent the time and got a spider staff so I could summon these cute little spiders to help me fight. Using the Daedalus Stormbow, I was finally able to make some progress in this game and kill the Queen Slime on day 46. I spent day 47 in the jungle looking for an inklet of the wind to make some lightning boots, but I fell for a trapped chest. On day 48, the pirates decided to attack me. Due to their health being so high because I'm on master mode, it took me fucking ages to defeat this army. I didn't care too much about all these little enemies, what I really wanted was the flying dutchman to spawn. I wanted to kill the flying dutchman because he drops a master mode only mount called the black spot that allows infinite flying and it would become very useful later on in the game, but I did not end up getting it. I finished off the day by finally beating the old one's army. On day 49, I decided to start making some more housing for all the new NPCs coming into town. I didn't want it to just be a boring square on top of my house, so as I started building it, it just turned out to be a cat. Uh, don't, don't ask me how my brain works. As soon as I noticed it was raining, I stopped building the house immediately and went right to the snow biome to try getting some frost cores again, because the ice columns only spawn during a blizzard. With the Daedalus Stormbow, I figured I stood a chance at killing them. And I was right. I made swift work of them and obtained a set of frost armor. With the frost armor, not only did it give me more range damage, but it also supplied me with the frost burn effect, which is just a little debuff whenever I hit an enemy. I ended day 50 by finishing the new part of my house. On day 51, I figured out these things called pylons exist, which are little teleporters that can teleport you across the map as long as you have two NPCs in their respective biomes near it. Um, I needed these fucking immediately because I've just been wandering back and forth all the way across the map to get to places wasting all my fucking time and energy, so I spent days 51 through 54 building houses all the way across the map. On day 55, I managed to spawn the pirate army again and fought the flying dutchman three fucking times and still didn't get the black spot. On day 56, I increased the size of my boss arena and went to go farm for more pirate maps so that on day 57, I could try fighting the pirate army again, but I still got fucking nothing. On days 58 and 59, things finally started to look up for me. I finally got the black spot mount from the Flying Dutchman, which allows for unlimited flight and it was going to become very useful later on, specifically for boss fights. I finally willed myself to move all the chests from my old house to the new one, it took fucking forever. I finally got the Clockwork Assault Rifle from the Wall of Flesh, and it proved to be pretty useful. But that was all about to change pretty quickly. On day 60 through 63, I hit the biggest roadblock of all fucking time. I could not kill any one of the mechanical bosses, specifically the Destroyer, because I wanted to get the Destroyer down first. I tried making the arenas bigger, but nothing happened. It was, it was of no use. 
I went back and forth just getting supplies to make the fucking spawners. And I did that over and over for like three or four fucking days. It was fucking insane. I even made an entire new arena at one point, and it still didn't work. On day 64, I had a sort of realization that it wasn't what I was using to fight the boss with, it was how I was fighting the boss. So I prepared for one more day and added another pylon along with acquiring some terror spark boots, and later that night, I fought the destroyer for the final time. I finally beat the destroyer after how many fucking days it took me to do it, and with the souls of might I got from him, I was able to turn my mini shark into a mega shark. With one of the mechanical bosses being dead, the steampunker moved in, which allowed me to buy teleporters to build an upgraded arena with better movement. With the new arena in place, I figured I would try the twins fight to see if I could beat them, but I did not make the track nearly long enough. On day 68 I got to prepping for the twins fight, which basically just consisted of me doubling the size of my arena for the boss attempt on day 69. I was so fucking close to killing this boss, but I ran too far away and it ended up despawning. From days 70 to 71 I ended up fighting the twins a total of 4 fucking times. And one of the times after killing the little fiery eye, the other one was too far away from me and it ended up de-fucking spawning for a second time now. So that was fun. But on the fourth try, I finally fucking beat him. From the twins, I ended up getting a bunch of souls of sight, which I then used to create an optic staff, which is another summoning weapon that allows me to spawn a little mini version of both the twins. And I also got a cool little hoverboard. Late on day 72, I beat the Skeletron super duper easy, and on early morning of uh, day 73, I used the Souls of Might that you get from the Skeletron to make a flamethrower. Since I had defeated all three mechanical bosses, I went to the jungle to start farming for life fruits and chlorophyte ore. What the life fruits do is they give you a little bit of extra health, not too much, I think it's like 100 after you get 20 of them. And the chlorophyte is just the next ore. I ran into the queen bee in the jungle and I only ended up dying after killing her because I just wasn't trying hard enough. I was I was just doing I was I, I let her win. Day 74 started and ended with the same shit as day 73, but right there in the middle there was a solar eclipse and there was only one thing I wanted from the solar eclipse from these little ghost fucking guys called these reapers and it was his death sickle and with the death sickle I could hit enemies through walls and it was going to be a great advantage to have in the jungle. After a few days of exploring, I figured it was about time I start my Plantera boss arena, so on day 75 I went to the jungle and found the bulb and started getting that put together. For day 76 through 79, I worked on hollowing out this huge ass area for the Plantera boss fight. On the top of it, I put a long wooden platform to run across. I put teleporters in each four corners and wired them to teleport across the map from both the bottom and the top. And then I built a little nurse's house so I could teleport back to it. For when I needed healing. This boss fight was easy as fuck, so I wanted to showcase how much shit it ate. After the Plantera fight, I went straight to the dungeon to see what was new, and with the jungle key that I found god knows how fucking long ago, I got a piranha gun from opening the jungle chest. The dungeon was very fucking hard, but it was also very rewarding too. Here you can see the piranha gun obviously works fucking great, and I end up using it till just about the end of the game. 
<laughs> ignore the snow miser heat miser song in the fucking background my friends ended up joining but anyways due to all the range buffs that would give me i went and got more chlorophyte bar i went and got a shit ton of glowing mushrooms i made some shroomite bars to make the shroomite armor Now that the plantera was defeated, I figured it was about time to go explore the jungle temple down at the bottom of the jungle. It took me fucking ages to get the end, because not only did I have to kill every enemy in each and every single room in this fucking temple, but I also had to break each and every pressure plate to avoid letting go of any of the fucking traps on the ceilings or the walls. Once I finally made it to the end, I figured I would give fighting the golem a shot, but I died like a fourth of the way through. The next day I went down there to try fighting him again and I pulled the fucking moves on him. I had one heart for the ending of the fucking fight. It was insane. Later that night, I don't know what the fuck I was thinking, but I decided to try fighting the lunatic cultist and obviously lost. Day 85 was the day that I realized that I don't have much time left at all. I mean, I only had 15 days left before beating the moon lord and I couldn't even kill the lunatic cultist. So for these next 15 days, I tried doing every conceivable thing possible in this game to prepare myself for this Moon Lord fight. For day 85, I ended up spawning the Martian army, or invasion, to see if I could get any good drops out of the little Martian saucer guys, but I couldn't kill a single one of those either. I did end up getting a pretty cool mount though, and this was the perfect opportunity to test the uh, Piranha Gun on big waves of enemies. And let me tell you, this Piranha Gun fucking shredded these enemies. So I did a little bit of research on weapons, and on day 86 I decided to go farm the golem for this weapon called the Possessed Hatchet, and it turns out it works pretty fucking good. On day 87 I ended up finishing all of my life fruits to get that 500 health mark. For days 88 through 90 I couldn't beat the, the fucking lunatic cultist no matter what I did. And so I stole the idea from fucking Adrian, link in the fucking description. Um, I needed stuff to dodge attacks, so I wouldn't be worried about taking as much damage. So, one of the things that I needed was from the Brain of Cthulhu, but obviously I don't have the prim Crimson Biome in my world. So I had to create my, so my own Crimson Biome. So what I did was I made a little graveyard next to the Druid, I bought the Crimson Seeds, and I started planting them everywhere. I ended up planting them in the desert so I could get these little blocks, I ended up making these little vials that I could throw around and it just grows it a lot faster. And I did that in the corruption and I ended up making a, a, bi a crimson biome, farmed for vertebrae, and then ended up killing the brain of Cthulhu and getting the drop. With me being able to dodge certain attacks, I got really close to kill killing him this one time, but I kept spawning that stupid fucking dragon, it was pissing me off. After getting the brain of Cthulhu drop on day 91, I went to the dungeon to get the black belt from Bone Lee, and I ended up getting it somehow. I kept trying to fight him, but my only flaw was that I kept spawning that stupid fucking dragon, and what I needed to do was not spawn that, because as soon as I didn't spawn that, I would easily kill him on day 92. Day 93 is where the real fun began, because I got to fight with all the fucking towers. I started off with the Stardust one, just because it was the closest one to me at the time, and holy hell did I fucking murk it. All I did was stay in the sky and fight those little, easy, little fucking bubble looking guys. It was wonderful. I used the Stardust to make a Stardust Dragon Staff, and then I ended up using that staff combined with my Prana Gun to absolutely murk and cheese the fuck out of the fucking Vortex Pillar. It was absolutely glorious. With the Vortex Fragments, I ended up crafting the Phantasm Bow, and holy hell did it mow down fucking enemies. The Solar Tower was easily the hardest because if I jumped up in the air, the little worm thing in the sky would heat seek me. By day 95, I only had one tower left, and after I killed that tower, the Moon Lord spawned, so I spent the entire day of 95 building my Moon Lord Arena with little teleporters connected from the bottom to the top. I spent day 96 fighting the nebula tower and beat it just barely on day 97. And since I beat all four pillars, the moon lord spawned, and just as soon as he spawned, he disappeared because I ended up dying, because I couldn't take him on. I spent days 97, 98, and 99 refighting the lunatic cultists and all the pillars because I needed to fight the moon lord again, but to be honest, I was losing confidence in myself if I could even do this. I 
fucking hated redoing this pillar, man. I fucking hated it. On day 100, I spawned the moonlight again, and I failed again. But I didn't just fail once, I ended up failing twice. I, I didn't know what to do at this point. I do believe that my equipment was good enough, I think it was just my skill. But it was day 100, I had no resources left to spawn the boss again, I would have gone over the 100 day limit. So unfortunately, how as anticlimactic as it is, this is the ending of the video. I'm sorry if you expected some super sexy badass fight with me and the Moonlord at the end, but I that just wasn't able to happen within the 100 days for me. But hey, there's always time for a part 2, right?